Hello, I'm Pete Gerlach. I'm the author of the nonprofit Break the Cycle website. That website offers eight self-improvement lessons, which have come from what I've learned from 31 years as a family therapist and 73 years of trying to understand what's going on on the planet. Lesson four in the website has to do with improving your relationships. I suspect you would agree that one requisite for healthy, satisfying relationships is trust. Can you think of someone in your life, recently or now, that you don't trust? Reflect on what that's like. What does that do to your relationship? Um, one aspect of this, by the way, is do you trust yourself? That's the subject of a different video. Right now, I want to focus on some suggestions. What can you do if you realize you have lost trust in another person? Could be an adult, could be a child. What is trust? Let's take a quick look at that. How would you define trust to a nine-year-old kid? How would you define it? I would say it's a belief that I believe you will tell me the truth. I really can forecast that that's something you will do for me. I trust, I believe, that you'll do what you say. I trust, I believe, that you'll use good judgment when you come to a problem. I trust your judgment. I, tr I think that you'll think clearly and well and you'll make the right decision. Uh, I believe that when we have conflicts or confusion, you'll respect my needs as much as your own. Those are examples of different beliefs that we have in relationships with every person, family, friend, lover, business, neighbor, church, strangers. We have an array of things that we trust, either because we have known the person a long time, or we give them the benefit of the doubt. I don't know you very well, so I'm going to trust that you'll do these things for me until you show me otherwise. So that's a very loose and suggestive definition. What is trust? What is that? It's an attitude that goes along with respect, by the way, which is a subject of a different video. So what can happen to cause you to lose trust in another person. Think across your life. I bet that's happened to you. Others may have lost trust in certain aspects of you. What does it take? Let's just look at the common one. I trust that you'll tell me the truth. If I find out through whatever information that you have lied to me, You've distorted the truth, you've omitted the truth, you've intentionally told me a lie. If I find that out, my trust in you is shaken or destroyed. If it happens several times in a row, especially if I bring it up to you saying, I really didn't like that, and you do it anyway, trust goes down or goes to zero, at least in that one department. Um, what I want to offer here is, can you regain lost trust in another person, an adult or a child? My answer is yes, with some qualifications. Think for a moment, have you ever tried consciously, intentionally, to regain lost trust? Have you ever tried that? Has anybody ever tried to regain trust in you? If so, you have some life experience to draw on. Um, it may have worked, you regained trust, or it did not work. You did not regain trust and you lost faith that you, you may recover lost trust. See what you think about these options. The first baseline requisite for regaining trust in another person whose behavior has cost you trusting them, believing that they're reliable and predictable, um, 
the first thing you have to do is put your true self in charge of your personality. If a false self is running your life, A, you won't know it, B, you won't want to know it, C, if you discover it, you won't know what to do about it. D, false selves distort reality and often have a problem trusting people. They trust too little or too much. So the first requisite in building trust with another person, regaining it, put your true self in charge of your personality. If you don't know anything about that, see lesson one in the Break the Cycle website. That's the entire focus of that self improvement lesson. Learn how to have your, self, your true self guide you. The second requisite to rebuild trust is to admit openly, first to yourself, then to the other person, I've lost trust in you. I no longer trust that you will be on time. I don't believe anymore that you'll do what you say. I don't believe that you'll tell me the truth. I don't believe that you'll balance the checkbook, that you'll fill the car up with gas, that you won't see another person sexually. Uh, I don't believe it. Admit it openly. The alternative is denial or intellectualizing, just saying, well, I don't have any feelings about it, but yes, I've lost trust, but I don't feel anything. Admit it and admit how it affects you. Often it causes frustration, disappointment. It's a loss. It may cause you to grieve. The loss of respect and loss of trust are major losses. They need to be grieved. So, openly admit to yourself and the other person, I've lost trust in you about so-and-so. Regardless of what the other person says, then say to yourself, do you want to regain trust? And if so, you're going to have to commit to some things. Commit to putting yourself in charge, committing to confronting the other person and saying, I want to rebuild my trust with you, if that's true. And here specifically is what I need from you in order, over time, to regain my lost trust. Let's say you've lost trust in the person uh, for telling you the truth about either certain topics or all topics. So you look at this other person and you say, I don't trust you anymore. No matter what you say, I can't believe you. In order for me to regain my trust in you, here's what's got to happen. I have to have you confide in me honestly what you're thinking, what you're feeling, what you're doing. And I need to find out over time that you have told me the truth time after time after time. I don't know how long that's going to take, but I need to prove to myself you are, in fact, being honest with me. I need you to do that intentionally, and I need you to give me feedback, and I need to give you feedback. I need to be open about discussing this with you over time, and I need you to want me to trust you again. So those are a couple of requisites. Another thing that is a major help with a person that you've lost trust in is to learn to do win-win problem solving. Often, uh, lost trust comes from the fact that people don't know how to communicate their needs honestly and clearly, that don't know how to handle values conflicts, loyalty conflicts, and a way of doing that is to study lesson two in the Break the Cycle website. There you can learn seven effective communication skills, the seventh of which is win-win problem solving. When two people know how to do problem solving together and they have an attitude of mutual respect, they can rebuild lost trust. I don't know if that matches your experience or not. I've seen it work over many years with a number of couples, clients, students, and my own family. 
The last thing I would recommend as a way of regaining trust patiently over time is to give the other <coughs> pardon me, give the other person feedback. I I have now trusted you for nine months. I haven't felt that you have lied to me in nine months. That feels really good. I am learning to trust you again. If that's true, say so. Don't leave them guessing. They may or may not ask you directly, how am I doing? But notice the importance of giving feedback. That will encourage the other person to continue being honest or being on time or not smoking or not using drugs or whatever it is uh, that you've lost trust in. Put your true self in charge. Lesson one. Admit you've lost trust in someone else to yourself and to the other person without blame. Say it factually, clearly, directly. If you want to rebuild trust, identify specifically what behavior do you need from the other person that over time is likely to let trust regrow. I need you to be on time within 10 minutes of times we agree on for the next six months arbitrarily, maybe nine months, maybe a year and a half. Be specific about the behavior you need from the other person and see if they're willing to agree to do their best to give you that behavior genuinely, not out of duty. Duty won't cut it. Cultivate win-win problem solving with both people, you and your partner. Do that from lesson two. And give feedback, positive or negative, over time as to whether your trust is increasing or decreasing. Notice what you're thinking now. These are specific steps you can take if you've lost trust in some capacity in a person who is important to you. You can do it if they're willing to cooperate and if their true self is guiding their personality. Lesson one. I hope this is useful food for thought. I hope you will invest time in lessons one, two, and four. Maybe three also, which is about blocked grief. Re try those out in the Break the Cycle website and enjoy the results. Thanks for your time.